No reason to act surprised. I am the Shinigami Ryuk. Judging by your laughter, you've already figured out that what you have is no ordinary notebook. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's saucy. First day of Death Note was good. It's it's always on any first day of any animated uh, project I've worked on. It's you know there's a bit of a rough start and you sort of stumble through and find the voice and pick it back up from the audition and then try and get a feel for what the whole picture is all about. But um, after the few hours we did this afternoon, it was a lot of fun. I started working in theater out of school, which is fantastic, and it allowed me to play lots of characters, which is what theater can do. And then I wanted to get into film, and I, I, I sort of started looking at animation and realizing that was bo this booming industry happening in Vancouver. And um, did a little bit of research about it and thought, I can do that. And then I went out uh, to a couple of events and, and uh, a large cattle call for a big production that was happening here. About, I guess it was almost 14 years ago. And I landed uh, one of the leads on a, on a new G.I. Joe series, I think it was. And, and that was my first start at it. And it was, uh, it's been a you know, roller coaster ever since. <laughs> that notebook you found originally belonged to me. And since you're now using it, you're the one who only knows who ha la 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 la. Well, voice acting I find to be uh, way more freeing than acting on camera. On camera is, um, it's a whole different style of acting. I find on camera is, I find to be, is very technical. Like uh, just so much involved with the makeup and the lighting. Voice acting be a lot like stage in that there's so much more freedom and so much more uh, where the performer is allowed to play with things and come up with ideas and, and uh, utilize, you know, some of their theatrical skills a lot more in, in animation. Then why did you drop it in the first place? You even wrote down specific instructions. So don't try to tell me this was an accident. You're asking me why? I did it because I was bored. What's more challenging about voice acting is, even more so than stage, is what you have to do with your voice and be able to do with your voice because um, you not only have to come up with completely um, different and, and, and original characters, sometimes something you'd never play on stage or on camera from, you know, teenage voices, and I wouldn't be cast as a teenager in an on-stage production, but I may in animation. And I wouldn't be cast as a probably grizzled old man on stage, but I can do that in animation. So obviously what you have to do with your voice is uh, much more difficult. And also in animation, there's a lot of play that happens with the sound effects that you do as you're, you're falling down the stairs now, or you're running and being chased, but you can't move from where the microphone is right here, but you still have to find a way to get the sound of panic and, and stress and running in, your, in the body and, and, and portray that message. But usually I'll just uh, I'll come up with, you know, the acting is first, and then I'll start to find play with, with what would be scarier, what would be, you know, meaner, what would be more ominous, what would be more playful, and go from there. Humans are so much fun. You still have to be able to say a line, and you can't really be eating an apple because in animation, you know, especially Ryuk's character, he, you know, takes up that big bite and, go and swallows a whole apple. I, you have to make up a sound for what's that going to sound like, right? And how's that, you know, make yeah. munching noises when there's nothing in your mouth and swallowing and then come up with a line right away as if you just have I a bunch of food in your mouth. Hey, Light. I'm talking to you. Sorry, he does something weird. He does this weird pause. Let me watch it one more time. Excellent. Sometimes those are the best parts, is not not the, the long, you know, drawn out sections of dialogue, but the action sequences and the and you know montages where there's eating or or you know yelling and screaming and fighting involved can be some of the best stuff. As soon as I saw um, Ryuk, I was like, whoa, very different than anything I'd seen. And I thought, oh, first thing I thought, he's going to be evil and really, you know, nasty voice, which I love doing those as well. And then when I read the outline, I went, oh, he's, it's much more playful and he's bored and he's just there to sort of stir the pot a little bit. And, and I went, that's even a more interesting take. So I just took both those things and 
and put something together pretty quick because I hadn't planned it at all. I showed up for my time slot for my audition and, and then saw him and went, can I read this? And came up with something right away. This is all so ridiculous. This world is rotting. Sold. Brian, I think he's a great choice for this character. You know, it's not a natural character, so how do you voice that character? Well, you don't want to force a voice because that's not gonna, you're not gonna want to hear that for however many episodes. You want something that sounds real for the character, and I think the voice he's doing is just, it's believable, it works, it's not forced, it's got uh, character and range to it. That's important. He's there for a reason, as a bit of the, the puppet master and also the, the, the jester as well, that he, he has to, you know, there's, he appears to, and he probably brings humor to, to scenarios that can be extremely, you know, devastating. How can he find a way to enjoy this? I think he's a, uh, I think he's a good foil to, to Brad as, as Light. They're, they're already, where, where I think we're seeing a good dynamic between the two of them which uh, is, I mean, that's what you want to end up with. But if you can get that right from the beginning, right from the, you know, episode one, that's perfect, that's money in the bank. In other words, the notebook is now yours. This is mine? If you don't want it, just give it to someone else. But if you give it away, I'd have no choice but to erase your memories of the notebook. So then, you're saying I can use the death? What are you, deaf? Yes. You know, it's, it's tough not uh, working sometimes on these shows when you don't get to work with other performers. It's nice actually when, uh, like Brad Swale had been in before me, so I could actually hear some of his reads um, previous to mine, because that's going to be obviously, a, you know, a lot of interaction between those two characters. So that was nice to hear, you know, where he was placing his character and, and the vulnerability that was there and the, and the feel that was coming from him. I think he's enjoying the part and he's doing a really good job. Uh, Brian is one of those voice actors, he has a real range of voices. You know, he can do really high, squeaky, goofy voices and low, deep, and he can do really good natural reads. He's really good at that sort of, you know, the steely-eyed tough guy. I didn't choose you. Don't you see, see this is just all an accident? Hey, <laughs> I've got a problem here. Well, as a voice director, Carl is, um, I'd say, one of the best in the whole city. And Vancouver is a huge industry for, for um, animation, probably one of the top three in North Amer America. What's the point of doing that? It's only a matter of time. Do that, put a bit more question mark on it. Sure. And he really knows what actors want to hear. He doesn't read the lines for you and say, do it like this, or, or, or spell it all out for you. He always lets you find what's going on. What's the point of doing that? It's only a matter yeah, of time. That's nice. Is the whole thing in my head? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this is like, oh, now I'm not bored anymore. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. got yeah. one. Yeah. 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 You know, we can joke and, and keep it like, as you're standing still in a, in a tiny booth, and you know, for some people, it probably can get monotonous. But he finds a way that, you know, before you know it, four hours, five hours, it's done. I enjoy it, and Carl makes it a lot of fun. It's just as I thought. Humans are so interesting. Does that work? <laughs> yeah. At first, I wrote the names of the worst criminals I could think of, like I was cleaning up the world one name at a time. Giving light this kind of power, he's like a superhero, really. That, at least that's what I, the first thing I thought, is, wow, what power? And nobody else has that kind of power. Even great leaders don't really have that, that kind of power to just point at anyone, really, it's it's godlike, and you know, there's no one closer than really that kids could relate to than superheroes. And superheroes are extremely popular because they can do things that nobody else can do. You know, he can you know become steel. He can turn himself into fire. But this guy can write a name and kill somebody. And I, I will become the god of this new world. 